Last Wednesday in his radio show, which is simulcast in the morning here on MSNBC, Don Imus described black members of the Rutgers basketball team as, quote, nappy-headed hoes. On Friday, he apologized on the air for his slur, but neither that apology nor his other apology this morning, part of what you just heard, stopped black leaders like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson from continuing to call for his resignation. I must ask for and was granted an audience with Mr. Sharpton on the Revs radio show today. Here's a bit of that program. Don't come on this radio program and insult me because no, I'm not no, insulting I, I you. Not let you question I'm not, not going to sit here and let you insult me. Didn't beat a sir, to your sir, I'm not going to look at it. You can keep talking all you want. You are not going to insult me. Don't insult me. I didn't. I have not insulted you. I'm talking about me doing used car commercials. Let me tell you what. I'll bet you I've, I've slept in a house with more black children who were not related to me than you have. A colloquy with the head of the Black Journalists Association. Well, as of right now, our company, NBC News, has publicly condemned Imus's remarks and says the matter remains under review. Joining us now, the host of the nationally syndicated radio show, the Ed Schultz Show, Ed Schultz himself. Ed, thanks for coming on. You bet, Tucker. Good to be with you. So, uh, Imus went on to say uh, in his two-hour-long, almost two-hour-long conversation with Al Sharpton this afternoon that he has personally held the hand of a child dying of sickle cell anemia. So, everything's okay? No, I don't think so. There's a couple different ways of looking at this. First of all, uh, past deeds, there's going to be a crowd of people out there that are going to say because Imus has done things for people that he ought to be forgiven for this. Uh, no, but I think he should be held to a certain standard, and I think the broadcast company ought to as well. This is either going to be a defining moment in decency, or it's going to turn out to be a big promo for Don Imus. Now, which is it? Personally, I don't think the guy should be fired. I think that he has sounded very sincere uh, in his apology. By the way, who's got the sincerity meter out there to judge whether he's sincere or not? You're entering into a lot of gray areas. I think the well, he's guy obviously. Wait, no, but hold on. He's he's obviously yeah. sincere. I'm not defending him. But you look at him. He's a scared old man trying to hold on to his job. I mean, he is deaf. He means it, and he understands that he hurt people. I think his sincerity, in my view, anyway, is beyond uh, question. But I'm just struck, and I, so I'm not calling for him to be fired either. I am just struck by the quickness with which the very liberals who attack George Allen, say, for using the word macaca, uh, are, are, willing to, are willing to all but forgive Don Imus. Why is that? Well, I think that's an interesting point. The fact is, is that uh, Senator Allen lost in the arena of public opinion. He lost his election. I think he'd probably like to have that macaca comment back. Yeah. Now the question is, in the free market, is Don Imus going to pay a price? Oh, wait a second. Wait, no, slow down. Wait, no, wait. That's the way. Hold on. Ed, with all due respect, you're, be you're better than that. That's a dodge. We're not, talk we're not talking about public opinion. No, no, it's here. not a dodge. I I no, I'm, I'm, not, asking, I mean, I'm asking what, what the gut reaction. I saw people beat the crap out of George Allen every day. He's a racist. He was sincere in his apologies, too. And yet those same people are awfully easy on Don Imus. And it seems to me there are two well, different now, standards wait a minute. here. And I, I have suspicions about why, but I'd like to know your, your theory. The, the public rendered judgment on Senator Allen. The public's going to render judgment on Don Imus. We'll find out over time whether this is just going to be another incident or if the public is really going to push back and ignore the guy and not listen to him or watch him anymore. I mean, he, he is in an arena now where he's under a microscope. Is this really what Don Imus thinks about the college women well, basketball Wait a second. Players? Wait a second. You're, okay, so you're coming out and... You know, you're not being easy on Don Imus, but you're you're saying, look, he's sincere. Is this really what he thinks? He's probably not a racist. And yet, think, and yet when I, George Allen said macaca, I believe, in fact, I'm certain <laughs> that you were one of the first to say, you know, he's basically a member of the Klan and he shouldn't hold statewide office, federal office as a result. No, I didn't I say that, it. but I did point out the fact I, I did point out the fact that he had a noose in his office. Okay, okay well, I can along point to with, 15 along with statements some Confederate Don Imus has made over the past 30 years that are that are just Ab appalling. Absolutely. Okay. But the market the market played out. The people decided they didn't want George Allen. Now the people and the listeners are going to decide whether they want Don Imus. Okay, but we can I we can take Allen, a poll of the people. Allen, and I want to know what you think, Ed. That's why you're on the show. I want to know why you are applying. Not the people out there who we can't see. You specifically are holding Don Imus to a different standard and I believe it's because I'm not famous. holding Don Imus I, I am not holding Don Imus to a different standard I think it's a sad day in America when a guy can't apologize for making a mistake that's what I think and I think that George Allen was sincere that he'd like to have that comment back and maybe he didn't mean it 
but the free market took place, he lost that election. Personally, I don't see a real parallel here, but I do believe that uh, he offended a lot of people. Nobody in America is out there defending Don Imus right now. The question is, is it a fireable offense? Well, lots of, actually, career... actually, lots of people are defending Don Imus, in effect, by going on his show. And I'm not questioning their right to do that. But when people go on his show immediately after something like this, that is, in effect, showing support for him. They have a right to do it. Again, I'm not attacking them for doing it, but they're essentially sure. defending Don Imus. Yes, they are. And they were not defending Trent Lott. They were not defending, as I said, George Allen, or a bunch of other people who clearly misspoke, whose words didn't represent oh, no, their I hearts, were, as Bush would say. No, I, you know, look, I think there were a lot of people that defended Trent Lott, and that's why he didn't get fired right away. Yeah, but that's all these pious liberals didn't. Right they away. jumped on him you like know, he was a, the Grand Kleagle. You know, Tucker, this is not a left, right, Republican, Democrat issue with Don Imus. This is about decency and what's acceptable uh -huh. on the air. And every broadcaster in this country is watching to see how this thing is going to play out. Nobody would want his problems right now. But I do think that he has been very sincere in his apology. And I also find it very interesting that Al Sharpton isn't going after the rappers the same way he's going after Don no, Imus. I think, I think, I think exactly. there's a double standard. Well, I don't there. think anybody, anybody believes that Al Sharpton is burdened with consistency. Uh, no, I don't think. We, we do hold him to different standards. Thanks a lot, Ed. I appreciate your coming on. You bet. Yeah.